Thank you. Over the past year and a half, these have been the board's decisions. Just a quick recap. Uh, number one, in late March 2011, the Harrisburg Patriot News, as well as the Center Daily Times, carried a story regarding the ongoing Sandusky criminal investigation. Apparently, the Board of Trustees was either unaware or unconcerned as no crisis response was forthcoming. Number two, in May of 2011, President Spanier briefed the board of the grand, on the grand jury investigation, but only one trustee appears to have subsequently inquired into the status of the matter. Apparently, once again, the board of trustees was unconcerned as no crisis response was forthcoming. Number three, trustees Garman, Surma, and Broadhurst knew about the impending indictments between 10 to four days in advance of the presentment yet failed to share the information with their board of trustee colleagues. Consequently, 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 the other trustees were totally unprepared for the presentment. Once again, no crisis response was forthcoming. Number four, the board of trustees quickly fired Joe Paterno and accepted President Spanier's resignation, presumably to take charge of for themselves. Unfortunately, None of the members of the Board of Trustees were prepared to fill the leadership void created by the firing of Joe Paterno and the resignation of Graham Spanier. The result, no one stood up for Penn State while the media slurred us and inaccurately framed the Sandusky scandal as the Penn State scandal. Number five, Rod Erickson replaced Dr. Spanier, but he too failed to defend our great school for these unjust and untrue slurs. Instead, he apologized and continues to do so for the university, suggesting that to the public that everyone associated with Penn State is guilty as charged. The administration, the students, the faculty, alumni, everyone. Number six, the board of trustees paid Lewis Free six and a half million dollars to do a comprehensive, thorough report on the scandal and Penn State. Unfortunately, he returned with something much less, and virtually no one on the Board of Trustees read it in its entirety, much less discussed it or debated its veracity. Number seven, the Board of Trustees refused to qualify, amend, counter, or dispute fundamentally unsubstantiated charges from free, and without comment, delivered it to the NCAA asking for a speedy, resolution to the NCAA charges. The Board of Trustees wanted to move on. Number eight, the Executive Committee of the BOT and Erickson allowed themselves to be bullied into accepting unprecedented sanctions from the NCAA and gave up any right to appeal. Accreditation questions and possible huge Department of Education fines remain serious concerns. Number nine, current Board of Trustees Chairwoman Karen Peets announced that the Board of Trustees will not review the free report. Of course, most of the board had never actually read it in its entirety. When we consider this report, that it was responsible for the decision of the NCAA to overstep its bounds and impose unprecedented sanctions, as well as cause irreparable harm to the university, this decision by Pete's is mind-numbing. And number 10, since the imposition of the sanctions, there have been multiple occasions when Erickson and others have made statements which appear to suggest their acceptance as fact, the patently true assertions, assertions that Penn State had a sick culture, which emphasized athletics over academics. In fact, the only place at Penn State with a culture problem is the Board of Trustees. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, uh, former president, uh, board president and alumni, Representative Steve Garbin resigned from the Board of Trustees on July 19th. Karen Peets has indicated publicly that she is refusing to name a temporary replacement, a responsibility which rests with her. And her position will, and his position will remain vacant until after the next series of elections in the spring. That means that the Garbin replacement will not join the board 
until July 2013, almost exactly one year after resignation. One can only assume that Ms. Peets doesn't want an yet another difficult alumni representative on the board until it is absolutely necessary or and hopefully after she has left the board. Thank you.